All right, so we're going to start some more related rate problems. So the first one is our standard one. It's a paper cup, but it's basically volume of a cone. And so what's going to happen is you're going to put some water in the cone, and it's going to fill up. And in each of these instances, we have rates of change. Our volume is increasing, and so you could see you could find the rate of change at that moment. The radius is changing and the height is changing. And so we're gonna get these variables. You wanna focus on the thing that is changing. So in this case, the height, the radius, and the volume. These are the things we're looking at. The paper cup is not changing, it's the water inside. So that's our focus on these problems, the water. So let's look at this problem. A paper cup has a shape of a cone with a height of 10 centimeters and a radius of three centimeters. If water is poured into the cup at a rate of two cubic centimeters per second, how fast is the water level rising when the water is five centimeters deep? So this whole thing is about the water changing. This is the paper cup. So those are not part of the problem. We will use them, but they are not numbers that you want to plug in for your radius, heights, and volumes. It's what's changing. And it says here that our volume, and it didn't even say volume, but the reason I know is because it's cubic centimeters per second. And so they're telling us to take this with respect to t because we're getting dv dt and this is v prime that is giving us our dv dt and then it says how fast is the water level rising well that's our height prime then that's our dh dt and we don't know that that's what it's looking for so you can take it now and fill them in so if you've already written out all of the variables and put r primes if you have an h you have an h prime you have a v you have a v prime you have an r you have an r prime the reason is you have an r prime is if you have some radius that's a variable well it's changing and if you have a height that's changing well it's got to have an h prime then and if v is a variable that means it has to change 10 is not changing so if you were to take the derivative of 10 you would get zero the cup is not changing so its rates of changes are zero but each of these have to have a variable then. Okay, so now our h here would be five centimeters. So we know our h. Now if we go down to our problem, you see we have a v, an r, and an h. And yes, we can do product rule on this with the r and the h, and then we have to find r prime and r and h. It's too much work. So what we wanna do is keep this simple. If we are given h and h prime and v and v prime, then we want to use this formula. So what we have to do first is get rid of this r. And that's where the 10 and 3 come into play. So this triangle right here is proportional to this triangle. And so if we write those side ratios, those sides, they will give us a proportional ratio because they are proportional. So r is to h as 3 is to 10. And the reason we're getting rid of R is because H is given. So we're going to go for H. And they're also looking for H prime. So we solve now for R because we want to get rid of R. So R is equal to 3 tenths H. You're just multiplying both sides by H. And then now we can plug it in. So V equals 1 third pi and then 3 tenths H squared H. And so if we simplify this some more, we end up with v equals, what would that be, 3 over 100 pi h cubed. This would become 9, and then cancels with the 3. The 10 becomes 100, and then we have an h cubed and a pi. So now if we take the derivative with respect to time, We end up with our dv dt. And then the 3 comes down to make 9 over 100 pi h squared, and then dh dt. And you know, I like my primes, so I'm going to convert it. And you'll notice now that we have everything we need. If you look up there, well, in order to find this, we need a v prime. So in order to find h prime, that's what we're looking for, we need a v prime and an h. Well, there we go. We got them all. So if we plug them in, that's 2, 9 over 100, 5 squared, h prime. We can now plug this in our calculator and find the answer. So 2 equals 
eight, six. And again, these are rounded off only for here. Make sure you plug the actual input in your calculator. So dividing it gives us 0 0.2829. And then we need our units. So if our volume is in centimeters cubed, our height is going to be in centimeters per second. And so this is 0 0.2829, so about a quarter of a centimeter per second. So what that means is at that moment, right here, when it's at 5, the water is going to come in at 2 cubic centimeters per second. We expect the water to rise by 0.2829 centimeters in a second. So about a second later, it should be 0.2829 centimeters higher. And that's how you solve them. So we create a formula. If you need to replace one variable to make everything fit with what you're given, there you go. Now, if you wanted to, you could plug 5 in to over here, and it would give us a radius. And if you took the derivative of this, well, guess what? You would get dr dt equals 3 tenths dh dt. So you just have a formula now for the rate of change between dht and dr dt. There's a lot of ways of getting there. But if you can replace the variable to what you need, it just makes it a lot simpler. All right, one more. So a balloon is rising at a constant speed of 5 feet per second. A boy is cycling along a straight road at a speed of 15 feet per second. When he passes under the balloon, it is 45 feet above him. How fast is the distance between the boy and the balloon increasing three seconds later? So let's look at a picture of what's happening. So the bike's speeding along, the balloon's going up. And so you can see we have three variables. And what shape do they make? A triangle. So as the boy, balloon, as the bike is here, it's 45 feet above him and then the bike continues off and the balloon continues up. And so we're looking for this right here. But we have two variables and we can call them any letter we want. And so we're going to call it X and Y. So this is X, this is Y, and this is D. And as time goes along, So does our picture. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So let's try this problem. So since x, y, and d are all moving, none of them are constant, we need an x. And since x is going to move, it's got a derivative. And y, it's got a derivative, a rate of change, and d also has its derivative. So now we need an equation. And anytime you have a triangle, and it's a right triangle, and that's why they say the balloon is right above him that means we get a nice vertical angle which means we have a 90 so if i put x y and d we end up with x squared plus y squared equals d squared so anytime you see that right triangle x squared plus y squared equals d squared now we can now fill it in so let's look what we have a balloon is rising at a constant rate of five that's our y prime so that is our y prime our y prime is five feet per second. And then that means we know it's a dy dt. We're taking the derivative with respect to time. A boy is cycling along the straight road at a speed of 15. So we know that that x prime is 15 and it's feet per second. So we know that's our dx dt. When he passes under the balloon, it's 45 feet above him. So that means our y is already started at 45. So when we fill in our y, we have to make sure that we include that number. That's all that is, is that we have to make sure we don't forget about it. So anytime you have distance uh, speeds like this that are given, they usually give you a time. So how fast is the distance between the boy and the balloon increasing? three seconds later. So if they give you a time, they're also telling you the dimensions of that triangle at t equals three seconds. And so we can find each of these values. So this one has, remember, distance is equal to rate times time. So that means our x, which is traveling at 15 feet per second for three seconds, would have a distance of 45 feet. Now the y, it already started at 45, so it's going to get an additional distance at 5 feet per second 
for three seconds. So that would be 15. So that means this total distance is 60 feet. So when this moves, we're talking about it already starting at 45 feet. And you can see the balloon is not moving as fast as the bike. So at three seconds, we've got to include that 45 feet right here plus the 15. And then this one's going at 15 times 3, so that's 45. So that's why we have to make sure that we get the 60 feet on that one. Because it started out at 45, and then it went up 15. So 45 up 15. So this one is 60 feet. And then now, if we know that's a 90, we can use our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, our x squared plus y squared equals d squared. So x here is 45, y is 60, and that will give us our d squared. So if we square root that, it's our distance formula. And if you plug that in your calculator, you'll see it says 75. So now we know our x is 45 feet, our y was 60 feet, and our d is 75 feet. So now all we need to find is d prime, and that's what it's asking for. How fast is the distance between the buoyant and balloon increasing? This right here. So again, how fast is that blue line increasing? So if we take and plug it into our derivative, we take the, respect, the derivative with respect to time, we get 2x and then dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2d dt dt. So 2x times plus 2y times equals 2d d prime. And we make sure that we have everything. So in order to find d prime, we need all of these. We just have to plug them in. So our x is 45, and our x prime is 15. Our y is 60, and our y prime is 5. Our d is 75, and then we have our d prime. So if we plug all of that in our calculator, we get 1950 equals 150 d prime, dividing. we get 13. So 13 feet per second is how fast at five seconds, at three seconds, that's how fast the distance between him and the balloon is changing. So just to get a little perspective, I put that at three. This right here is changing at 15 feet per second. The top is increasing at five feet per second and the distance between them at three seconds is increasing by 13 feet per second. That's what it's changing. And now if you wanted to do the whole thing again, you could do it at four seconds. So the distance is, as it increases is going to change each time. And so there you have it. So anytime this triangle happens, you're using this situation. You can use the formula to find all the different missing letters. And you can use the formula itself to find the rates of change for each.